Greetings guys, girls, and non-binary pals and welcome back to another video. A few months back, I am sure you will recall, I made a video about toxic boy moms because what a mess that is. <laughs> and it did really well. You all seem to really enjoy it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and I wasn't planning to make another video about toxic boy moms. However, a few days ago, I opened Twitter to this video. So the video says the moment Ava realized she was no longer the favorite and it is two parents who are having a gender reveal with their daughter, Ava, and they, it's like a box and confetti, either blue or pink is gonna come out of the box and they pull the rope so the confetti comes out and it is blue. The response to seeing the blue confetti is the mother quite literally like bowling over her daughter. She like pushes her so her daughter falls to the ground so she's like screaming and excited about having a son, which is so wild. <laughs> that is meant to be like a family celebration. That's something you're meant to celebrate together, you know, and like joking about being like, well, now Ava is second, son is the favorite. Obviously the boy is gonna be the favorite child. She's gonna shove her daughter out of the way for her son. And she came out later and like made an apology. It says, to everyone that saw my video that happened to go viral, I am deeply sorry if I offended anyone by my comments that were made regarding that video. It was not meant to offend or upset anyone. It was a hurtful joke and for that I apologize. We love our little girl and her brother more than life. And like, I'm glad you're apologizing, but I also don't believe you that it was like a full joke because you literally bowled your daughter over, you pushed your daughter to the ground and you're like, it was joke, I was joking. I'm like, you weren't though, <laughs> not, not really. <laughs> That poor girl is now gonna grow up knowing she's like second to her brother and whether that's intentional or not, it's very clear that that's what's gonna happen because moms love to be weirdly emotionally involved in their son's lives and do prioritize them over their daughters. A lot of the time, not all the time, obviously this is like a toxic boy mom thing. It doesn't apply to everyone. Um, but you can see that this is the making of that. And I am so sorry for this young girl, for Ava, having to grow up in the shadow of her baby brother. So I am wishing her all of the best. And to the mother that posted this, nothing changes the fact that you pushed your daughter to the ground. And although I don't know what the response would have been if it was a girl, um, I don't think it would have been quite so drastic. I feel like you probably would have celebrated together more, but you know, I, I don't know, cause I haven't seen the alternative, but based off of that response, that is what I'm guessing. So anyway, because I saw this on Twitter, it made me wonder, what are toxic boy moms up to recently? What about our toxic boy mom that we focused in on last time? How has she been? What's going on in the world of emotional incest and, and favoritism towards our sons and the misogyny that is pushed by mothers? What's happening? So I thought that we would have another dive, another look into it and another little discussion about it because there is always more to say. It's always more to say because there's always people doing shit. Uh, but before we do get into the video, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to today's patron of the day, Rhea. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for all of your support. And I hope that you enjoy this video. If you would like to become a patron, it starts at as little as one pound a month and the link is in the description or you can go to patreon.com slash savvy cat. And I would also like to let you know that today's video is sponsored by Aura and I will tell you a little bit more about them a little bit later on. I thought a good place to start this video would be to have a bit of a check-in on Anna Sacone, is that how you say it? I don't know. Um, sorry if I got that wrong. Who is the mom that inspired the video I made last time? She's the woman who sat down and was like, I never thought I would be a toxic boy mom, but here I am letting my son hit my daughters because maybe he's had a bad day. He never thought that I would be that toxic boy mom. He hits his sisters, he punches them. I'm like, maybe he's having a hard day. Like she's, she's her. And then she made a bunch of like jokes about it later on. Excuse me, bro. You're excused. Um, but she, she didn't stop. <laughs> 
She did make a couple more videos after we last checked in on her. It's been a little while since she has, but not long enough. She really milked it. So she made this video. TikTok is uh, her with her three daughters and it says, but it's over. TikTok was right. I need therapy, but I need your brother more as she pushes her girls aside and goes and picks up her son. Um, please understand who else will represent the toxic boy moms. I need to uphold my reputation as the villain. And she's like carrying her son and running out of the house while her daughters are chasing her. And like... <sighs> It's so funny because she's managed to paint herself as like the victim in this. She's managed to turn it into a joke of being like, um, everyone turned on me. Everyone's calling me a toxic boy mom and saying that I don't love my girls and that I favorite my son. So I'm just going to play off of it as though people made that up. Like no one accused you of that until you sat down and made a video about how that is what you do. And then people were like, hey, that's kind of fucked up. You shouldn't do that. And then you made jokes about it. So people are like, what are you doing? This isn't funny, your poor daughters. And then you keep making jokes about it. Like you're trying to portray it as though you didn't create this narrative by yourself. Like you didn't have to do that. And like, sure, in your first video, you sat down, you're like, I'm acknowledging that I am a problem. But then you didn't do anything to change it. You turned it into a joke and you turned it into something that, you know, you could get views off of and that you thought was really funny when it's not very funny. And I know that your daughters are playing along with it and they're obviously involved in these TikToks and they're involved in the joke, but like, what else do you expect them to do? They're young and they want your approval and your love. And if you're showing clear favoritism, they're going to do anything that you ask them to because they want the same attention that their brother is getting. You admitted to having a favorite. You literally admitted to saying like, you let your son hit his sisters because what if he's had a bad day? I don't know. He just wants to get his anger out. So I let him hit my daughters. Like. You said that yourself. No one is like pushing that on you. You you fully sat down and said that to a camera and people rightfully were like, hey, that's not cool. That's not okay. Please don't do that. You just like expect everyone to be chill with it, including your children. And like sometimes kids don't acknowledge favoritism or admit to favoritism until they're a bit older and they're looking back and they realize that you mistreated them and then they won't want to have as much to do with you as you would like. Like they will cut you out of their life including your son. Kids don't always like being the favorite. It can cause a lot of stress on relationships because kids can be uncomfortable about that. There was some favoritism in my family with uh, my dad and my sister and I, and mm, he favored my sister a lot. And that really put a strain on their relationship because she felt guilty about being favored. And that can happen a lot because, you know, people have empathy and people love their siblings and they don't want to be involved in hurting their siblings, you know? I wanna say that I don't disagree with her parenting a lot of the time. She makes a lot of TikToks about parenting um, and things she does for her kids and how she raises her kids. And a lot of it I really agree with. She struggled with an eating disorder growing up and she doesn't want her kids to go through the same thing. So she makes a lot of TikToks about how she instills healthy eating habits in her kids and how she'll never punish them for not eating, how she'll never like stop them from eating dessert or restricting certain food groups and such. Like she wants her kids to have a healthy relationship with food and their bodies. And she does a really good job of that. And I absolutely applaud her for that because that is something that a lot of parents fail at. And then on top of that, on my last video that I made, a lot of people were commenting being like, imagine if one of her kids was trans. And I thought that I would let you know that one of her daughters is actually trans. Um, so she does treat her very much like a daughter, which is great. She acknowledges that her daughter is her daughter and she's never done anything to try to restrict that or change that or hold her back. She fully views her as her daughter. And that just means she gets caught up in being, you know, treated equally as her daughter, which is second to her son. 
I am really glad that she is so accepting of her daughter's identity and of who she is. And she is fully accepting and welcoming and talks about uh, trans kids. And she talks about how to help trans kids and why um, trans healthcare and stuff is important. So that's really great. It just means that she gets caught up in the misogyny. <laughs> so ideally, there would just be no misogyny in the house, you know? But at least she's treating all her daughters with equal amounts of misogyny. So she does a few things really well. She does a few things right. I'm not trying to take away from that, you know? Uh, I don't think she's a bad mother in a lot of regards. I just think that this is a problem. Speaking of mothers favoring their sons, we have this mom. He says, why did I favor my son over my daughters their entire childhood? He left at 18 and never looked back while my girls blow up my phone all day, every day. Now there are multiple ways to read this and I'm not entirely sure what way it's intended. I initially read it as like, why did I favor my son? Well, he left at 18 and never looked back and my daughters blow me up every day. Being like, I first read it like her being like, I favored him because I knew that he would be independent. That's good. Whereas my daughters, they can't do shit. They rely on me too much and that's annoying. Like that's how I read it initially, um, but I don't think that's how it's meant to be read. I think that it's saying, I favored my son. Why doesn't he talk to me? I didn't favor my daughters, yet they're talking to me all the time. It's really annoying. Why do my daughters talk to me, but my son doesn't? He was my favorite. And like, that goes right back to what I was saying before about how sometimes favoring a child can cause a rift in the relationship. Like, it makes sense that it worked out like this because your daughters have spent their entire life trying to get your attention and trying to get your approval. So they're going to continue doing that even into adulthood. You didn't pay them enough attention as kids. They spent their whole lives trying to get your attention. So they're going to keep doing that. Whereas your son got too much of your attention. And as soon as he was able to leave it behind, he did because he got too much of it and he didn't want it anymore. You were overbearing, you were taking over his life and he craved independence. And now he's got independence, he's gonna take advantage of that. You know, like you need to not force yourself into your children's life so much. You need to not be so overbearing. You need to allow them to have independence throughout their life. And you just shouldn't favor your children. It's like your job is to love all of your children and to care for all of your children. You shouldn't over insert yourself in their lives. We also shouldn't completely remove yourself from their lives either. Now, this next one is a little bit different. It doesn't really fit into any of the categories. It doesn't fit into the like favoritism, nor does it fit into the emotional incest, which we'll get into soon. It's kind of like a weird middle ground. Um, and that is this one, just making my son's girlfriend a sandwich as she eats everything in my house. It's just like two pieces of bread and then she puts a ton of chili powder on it. And then like massive slices of like, ginger because you know when your son's girlfriend comes to your house and is just eating food we want to traumatize her because how dare she eat the food in my house ma'am <laughs> what <laughs> what i don't understand this and i've seen this conversation happen a few times of like i personally cannot imagine not letting a guest in my house eat my food if you are a guest in my house Help yourself, eat whatever you want from the cupboards. Granted, I don't ever have <laughs> that much. Like, eat whatever you want. You are a guest in my house, make yourself at home. Have tea, have coffee, have juice, have whatever you want. It's, you're here, you're my guest, you should never be hungry. Go into the kitchen, help yourself, or if you're hungry, ask me and I'll grab you something if you don't feel comfortable going into my kitchen, which is fair enough. And I can't imagine doing that for anyone, let alone like your son's partner like i don't know how old she is but that doesn't really even matter if you are struggling financially i understand like if you're only able to feed yourself and your son it's like it's difficult when you have someone else coming in and eating all your food i understand that but the response to that shouldn't be to like borderline assault her and traumatize her it should be to ask for a contribution and just like approach her and be like hey i actually can't afford groceries for three people. If you wanna eat our food, that's totally fine, but are you able to make a contribution or are you able to bring food with you next time just because I'm struggling a little bit, you know? Like, ask. If I was at my partner's house and I was hungry and I went to go like get something to eat and his mother was like, oh, I made you a sandwich and I took a bite into it and it was that, I would break up with my boyfriend. 
Like, and that's so terrible, you know, because he didn't do anything wrong. However, when you have overbearing mothers like that, especially, you are aware that they are going to be in your life forever. If I stay in this relationship, she is going to be in my life forever. And I don't want to be around someone who doesn't want me to eat food. I don't want to be around someone who like assaulted me. <laughs> I just can't do that. I, I'm not in it for that. I can't, I can't do that. And it sucks. Cause like, if you love this person, it's really hard, but you know, they come with their family and sometimes, sometimes that's the sacrifice you have to make. And it's like, I don't want to tell my partner they have to choose between their mother and me. Cause that's not a fair position to put someone in. Ultimatums are never good. And I am a firm believer that if you get given an ultimatum, choose whoever didn't give you the ultimatum. That's, that's the rule. If they choose to like, be with you rather than have a relationship with their mother, that's on them. But I'm, I'm, I'd never ask someone to make that decision. I would just be like, I can't do this. I'm really sorry. Because like, I couldn't, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. And with that, I think it is time to move into the next section of the video. The fun, fantastic side of toxic boy moms, emotional incest. <laughs> The part of TikTok, the type of toxic mom who sing love songs to their sons and say that they don't want to share them or give them up and that no girl will ever love them the way they do because they have weird view of their children. Uh, but before we get into that, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura, who are fantastic and will help you with your internet security and safety so that you can look at toxic boy mom TikToks in all the privacy that you need. <laughs> Have you ever Googled yourself and been shocked to find your personal information just like existing on the internet for anyone to see? Uh, because that's terrifying and it happens way too often. Data brokers are making a fortune off of selling your information to like scam callers and spam sites and anyone else who wants to learn more about you in order to get things from you and take advantage of you, especially for monetary gain. Aura can identify if there are data brokers who are stealing and selling your information and can offer you a way to opt out of that happening. You know, when you go to websites and you hit allow all cookies and you never read any of the information because who can be bothered reading all of the information? Sometimes you are allowing for those sites to access your personal information and not only access it, but sell it as well. And Aura will identify if this is happening and allow you a way to opt out of that. And it will then take your information away and stop brokers from being able to access it and being able to sell it. So Aura is really great because it means you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to read the fine print. You don't really have to do anything. You just ask for them to take your information away and they will do it. I highly recommend it. It is always good to be as safe as possible online because you know, people can access so much information about us. And like, isn't it so nice to not have to get scam calls and scam emails? I don't know about you, but I get so many scam calls. I used to get them like literally every day. So being able to take all of your information away is, an extremely useful thing to do. If this sounds like something that you would like to try, which I absolutely encourage you to do, then you can go to aura.com slash kiwi for a 14 day free trial, or you can use the QR code up on the screen or the link in my description. So thank you Aura so much for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it. Um, and yeah, let's get back into the toxicity of boy moms. <laughs> A really popular sound on boy mom TikTok is Enchanted by Taylor Swift, which is so strange. Um, why, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> like this TikTok is an example of that. Please don't be in love with someone else. And it is a mom holding her like young son. Like I would say like, I don't know how old kids look like four maybe <laughs> saying when you're obsessed with your son and already worried about having to share him. And it's so strange and it's strange for a multitude of reasons. Like one, no matter how old your son is, it's super weird to talk about having to like share him with another woman. Like it's really, really odd, but it's especially odd when they're like small when they're like 
toddlers because why are you rushing their life so much, you know? You don't have to think about him getting married or being in a relationship or anything like that for like years and years and years. It is not at all relevant right now and it's not going to be for a really long time. There is no need to like rush that and to think about that and to like worry about it. Like you should want your son to be happy. You should want your son to be loved. You should want the best for your son. And it's so weird to think about like you having to share him with someone. No one is ever going to love your son in the way that you do. They shouldn't ever love your son in the way that you do. And he certainly shouldn't ever love someone in the way that he loves you. A mother and son connection is very different to any relationship dynamic he's going to have. No partner should be his mother and he shouldn't view a partner as a mother either. They are two separate things. They should be kept very separate. And it's so strange. It's so strange as well of like talking about it like, I don't want to share him because like your son doesn't exist for you. <laughs> your son doesn't exist for you. I don't understand how there are so many of these mothers, there are so many mothers and parents in general who have kids because they want to be loved. Like there's that TikTok audio that's like, if you have a boy uh, it's because God wanted to show you what it's like to truly be loved, which is gross. You shouldn't have a child so someone will love you. You should have a child because you have love to give, yeah? Your children don't exist for you. However, you do exist for your children. You chose to bring them into the world. You owe them love. You owe them love. You owe them food, shelter, a good life. You owe them happiness. That is what you owe your kids. They don't owe you anything. They didn't choose to be born. You decided to have them. They don't actually have to love you in return. It's nice to, that's a good benefit. If you love your children and you treat them well and you, you know, love them, <laughs> then they will most likely love you in return, but they don't owe you that, you know? Like your children exist so that you can love them. They don't exist to love you. That's not how this works. Have kids because you have love to give. Don't have kids because you want to feel loved. There is a, another TikTok using this same exact sound because like there are thousands of them. There are thousands and thousands of them. It's so strange, um, but here it is. When your son shows you his crush, but you are his first love. And this is like a, like a, like a preteen. And he's like showing his mom his crush on his phone. And then she turns to him grabs his face, pulls her face to be like right next to his and like s sings at him, please don't be in love with someone else. Do you understand how weird that is? <laughs> Do you know how weird it is? Please pull your face away from your son's face. Please don't put your face that close to your son's face in this context. Like it's fine to be close with your kid and to like have you know, some sort of intimacy. That's totally fine. I think that it should be more normal to like kiss your kids and like hug your children. Like I think that should be much more normal um, than it is. However, in this context, it's really fucking weird. This was a repost. Um, Someone commented saying, I haven't seen these videos, but these clips are just a mom loving her son. Normalized parents being affectionate to their kids. SMH, y'all bullied her. Like I agree, we should be normalizing parents being intimate for lack of a better term, with their children. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it should be more normal. I think it's really lovely when kids carry on having such close relationships with their children um, to an extent. But when you are <laughs> holding your son's face in your face and saying, please don't be in love with someone else and the song is written from a romantic perspective, like the song is literally about a girl falling in love with a boy and being like, please don't be in love with someone else. Please don't have someone waiting on you. I want to love you. I am in love with you. Please love me and not some other girl. Like super, super weird. And it's really weird for you to not think that it's weird. <laughs> it's gonna mess these kids up. These kids are gonna like grow up and have this really weird view of relationships and you don't want anyone to replace you, right? But then you also won't let your sons date anyone who isn't going to replace you. You are like 
these moms run like screenings of their girlfriends and like will only encourage them to date people who take care of them. They want someone who cooks for them, who cleans for them, who does everything for them. They want to live vicariously through their girlfriends. So they want their sons to date someone exactly like them because that's the only person that'll be good enough for them. And do you realize how weird that is? Like, I wanna say it's unintentional, but I don't think it is. They only want someone who loves their son in the same way they do and who does everything for their son that they do. Like, don't, that's weird. You realize that that's weird, right? You shouldn't want your son to date his mother and you shouldn't want to date your son. That's not something you should ever, should ever want. And you see people, like, I think I talked about this in a different video, like moms saying, uh, we raised our sons to be the men that we always wanted. So obviously we'd want to date them. What? 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 No, this is such a gross and weird mentality. Yes, you are raising sons to be good men. You are raising them to be people who are able to give lots of love and who deserve to be loved. You want your sons to be loved. You want them to give love. You want them to be happy. You want them to bring happiness to people. Absolutely. But nowhere along that journey should you ever develop romantic or like sexual desires towards your child. It's really fucking weird. You can view people in a platonic way. You should be friends with your kid, sure. Um, but you are you are mother and son, nothing more. And you shouldn't ever desire more than that. I can't imagine ever desiring any more than that for someone in my family that I love. Super, super, super weird. Please don't. I'm sorry that you seem to be confused. He belongs to me. The boy is mine. POV found the perfect song for my son's mother-son wedding dance. And the caption is toxic mom alert. He's six months old, by the way. This goes right back to what I was saying before. Like he is six months old. <laughs> and she said that she's joking, but like, when you're making these jokes, you're not entirely fully joking. Sometimes they're very obviously joking. This tag is mostly filled up with a lot of people making fun of toxic boy moms as they rightfully should. But then like ones like this are like, haha, I'm joking. It's like, I don't think you are though. Like it comes across as rather genuine. And even if you are joking, there are a lot of moms who do share the same sentiment. Obviously this is my second video I'm making about it. I'm gonna go back and say what I've already said of like, can we stop rushing our kids' lives? Like, like there is no need for it. He is six months old. Please let him be six months old. Enjoy the time you have with him. You have many, many years before he is going to be in serious relationships. And when he is in serious relationships, you aren't sharing him with anyone. You aren't going to have to like fight someone. No one is taking over for you. You're not gonna lose your son. He is still your son. He is just, also in someone else's life. He is just being loved by someone else. He is just being happy with someone else while also still being loved by you. Nothing changes. Your relationship with your child shouldn't change when there is someone new in their life. They're still your child. <laughs> it's so weird. Let your kids be kids, yeah? And also like have healthy relationships with them. <laughs> Love your kids without expecting anything in return and then like allow them to have lives outside of you because you don't own them. Enjoy your time with them while they grow up and grow with them. Yeah, like grow with your kid. Let them have good experiences and like love them and the people in their lives, you know? Okay, I'm going to end this with one final TikTok because I've been here way longer than I initially anticipated. And that is this. Raising boys who are obsessed with me so their future wife can't say they're going to her side for the holidays. And it is just a mom with two young boys that she like picks up and spins around. And like, I just, and this is what I've said multiple times. I just find it so interesting when parents raise their kids so that they get things from them, so that they get love from them. It's like, I'm raising my children to love me and be obsessed with me so that I get to see them at holidays. Like you should just want your kids to be happy and like you shouldn't force them to want to see you because I feel like this leads to you at some point like low key guilt tripping them into coming and seeing you for the holidays being like, I gave you everything. I loved you. I gave you my whole heart. Please come and see me for the holidays. Like that's gonna make them not wanna come see you for the holidays. <laughs> 
<laughs> like you should be thankful for the time that they spend with you. And like, you should, you know, want love in return from them. Absolutely. It is totally normal and okay for you to want your kids to love you and to want to see your children. Absolutely. However, you have to acknowledge that that is not the point of having kids. <laughs> You shouldn't like have your small children and be like, I'm going to make you love me so much that in 20 years time, you will come visit me. Like that's such a weird way to live your life. That's such a weird motive to like love your kids. And I know that it's not entirely serious, but it's still such a weird thing to even say. Just in my opinion, it's so strange to be raising your kids while thinking about them as adults. Stop thinking about your kids as adults. Stop imagining them as adults right now. You should be raising them to be good adults. Yes, but you should also be thinking about them as children right now and not who they're going to be as adults and what they're going to be doing and how much they're going to love you. Because how much they're going to love you when they're adults is like the least important thing. You should be raising them to be good people, but you shouldn't be raising them to exist just to love you. It's odd. It's weird. Don't do that. Have kids because you have love to give. Don't have kids because you expect love and you want to be loved. Bad motive. A lot of people have kids because, you know, they want to solve relationship problems bad. Or some people have kids because they are alone um, and lonely and they want someone to share their life with. And I also think that that's a bad reason to have a child because you're putting so much pressure on that kid to like be a rock for you. And you can't put that on a kid. You need to be in a position where you are wanting to give love and give everything to someone, you know, like you can't just have a kid and expect them to give to you. That's not what kids are for. That's not what children are for. They're children. You have to let them be children. You have to let them grow and you have to help them grow. You have to hold their hand. You have to support them. That is your job. Despite what you think, despite what you want, despite everything, you should just want what's best for your children. And if that is spending holidays with their partners, families instead of yours, I'm sorry, that sucks. But sometimes that's what's gonna happen, you know? There is much more to parenting than expecting your kids to come visit you when you're older, because the more that you try to push that, the less likely they are to wanna do it. I am going to end this video here. I hope that you have enjoyed. On the last one of these I did, I had people asking me to do like toxic girl dads. Um, next, but I kind of was thinking how that's sort of what my other straight it's okay videos are, because a lot of that focuses around dads being weird. But if you want to see me more specifically talk about that, let me know. Maybe I'll do that. I'll have a look into it. Um, another alternative is like oldest daughter syndrome is another thing people have asked for, and those are sort of along the same lines of this. So, so let me know if those are things that you would be interested in seeing from me, and maybe I will, you know, have a look into that. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for joining. And a huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Toulouse, Bobby, Josh, Mandy, Robbie, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Ida, Quia Cory, Raven, Danielle, Elias, Evie, Rin, Jewel, Sparrow, Apollo, Taylor is trying, Matto, and Chris. I love and appreciate you hugely. Thank you so, so much for all of your support. I love and appreciate you. I already said that. I said it again. If you would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat. I'll click the link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early, as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, live streams, and more. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, The Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, That Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. <laughs>